Hi, y'all. Let's talk a little bit about an article that recently appeared on CNN discussing the supposed decline of freedom of the press in the United States, according to a new report that has been published by a watchdog group. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, fake, nar um, sorry, fake news, crafting narratives, and, uh, well, the article itself. So uh, I'm going to take the definition of fake news to be the one that appears on the top of Wikipedia. Seems reasonable to me. Fake news is a type of yellow journalism that consists of deliberate misinformation or hoaxes spread via the traditional print, broadcast news media, or via internet-based uh, social media. Fake news is written and published with the intent to mislead in order to gain financially or politically, often with sensationalist, exaggerated, or patently false headlines that grab attention. It seems reasonable. It's exaggerated, sensationalist. It's meant to mislead. It's meant to distort reality. It's to craft a narrative, to weave a tale about the universe that is counterfactual. Seems like a reasonable definition to me. So, uh, for no particular reason, let's just read a little bit from the article that appeared on CNN uh, that's talking about uh, the Freedom House people uh, and the report they've published. Um, globally, the 2017 report found that only 31% of countries have a free press, which the group defines as, quote, a media environment where coverage of political news is robust, the safety of journalists is guaranteed, state intrusion in media affairs is minimal, and the press is not subject to onerous legal or economic pressures, end quote. Uh, while we're discussing fake news, because they're going to talk about Donald Trump's talking about fake news and how that's one of the problems, uh, this says globally, the 2017 report found that only 31% of countries have freedom of the press. Uh, it actually found that 13% do, but a mere detail, I won't hold that against them. Anybody could have a type of, maybe the person's dyslexic. Anyway, so what this group here, the, uh, the report, okay, the way that you, you craft a narrative wall maintaining the patina of being a, a real journalist is that you have a political view or a particular bias that you want to support and you say, my God, I, I want this to be news. What is it that whatever shall I do to find something to talk about that allows me to push this narrative? Well, looky there. I happen to have spotted a watchdog group, an interested party, that happens to have a report that coincides with what I want other people to believe about the world. Uh, I will just talk about this, and instead of espous uh, um, espousing my own view, I will just say that according to them, this is true. They're just ducking the response. They want they want to push this narrative, but they have a convenient way to, that where they don't have to do it in their own name because they can say, "Oh no no no, I'm a journalist. I'm just reporting on what someone else said, so it's real news," without critically analyzing what it is that the uh, report they're citing to actually says. I mean, you know, you could go get like a an eight or nine year old to get some crayon and write out anything he wants, and then sign it, you know, and say, by the way, I, Joe Smith, aged eight, uh, am, am, am my own watchdog group. And then you could say, well, I found, I found a report from a watchdog group that says, you know, you should give more presents on Christmas or whatever it is. The fact that someone out there says it doesn't mean that the, there's any analysis, doesn't mean that there's a great deal of truth, doesn't mean it's not dishonest. And uh, just uncritically um, citing to that, without pointing out how flawed it is, is fake media. It's sensationalized. It, well, it's not sensational in this case. It's exaggerating what, it, what is the case and is letting someone else do it for you, do the heavy lifting of lying for you, so that way you can just cite to it uncritically and say QED. So what they've done here is something that's called a persuasive definition fallacy. They're redefining something to mean something else and then saying, um, you know, they'll have this little secret definition somewhere or be hidden off, you know, like the fine print or whatever. And so when they talk about freedom of the press or, you know, talk about X, but instead of using the, the definition of X everyone's familiar with, they use the definition Y for X. And then you think they're talking about X when in reality they're talking about Y. They have uh, engaged in a well-known fallacy, a very common fallacy, in order to mislead people to believe things, uh, to believe things that are false as though they were actually true. So anyway, the year's report changed the United States press freedom rating by two points from 21 to 23. Its worst rating in more than a decade. The group attributes this to a worsening political environment, the rise and polarization of partisan media outlets, and an increase in Russian-sponsored propaganda related to the 2006 presidential election. I want you to think about that for a second. Let me, let me read the important bit there again. Um, the group attributes this to a worsening political environment, the rise and polarization of partisan media outlets, 
and an increase in Russian-sponsored propaganda. Now, this Russian-sponsored propaganda, one of its ways of doing this is through the news organization, RT. I can't help but notice that in the United States we make no effort, whatever, to censor anything that is published by RT, even though we know that it's propaganda. We know it is propaganda from a, uh, a government that does not have our best interests at heart. Nevertheless, it is their right to speak here, and so we do nothing to interfere. Our refusing to interfere, our refusing to censor uh, this, this group, is being claimed to be restricting the freedom of the press. Because the government is saying, press, say whatever you want without restraint. Just knock yourself out. We have no interest in taking action against you. It's not within our remit to do that. You are free to have whatever opinions and push whatever narratives you would like. Go forth and do great things. And this group comes along and says, if you just let them keep talking and talking and talking and talking, that constrains freedom of the press. So if those journalists... Uh, anyway, so if, if the journalists are, are propagandists, then that's not freedom of the press, uh, even though you let them continue saying it, because apparently they're wrong. Now, mind you, they're complaining about Donald Trump calling news organizations fake news, and how that itself is also um, reducing freedom of the press when you, when you do things like that. Well, saying that, the, you know, like RT or other Russian fronts here that, in the news, um, that they are, you know, being, that they're doing propaganda. That's another way of saying they're, say, they're doing fake news. And so, ipso facto, this group is now getting on the bandwagon of suppressing freedom of, speech, uh, freedom of the press. If it is, in fact, true that calling an organization uh, fake news is oppressing, is, I'm sorry, is restricting the freedom of the press, which, of course, it doesn't do. Freedom simply means you have the, uh, the liberty to do as you should choose. It doesn't, re oh, we'll get to what it doesn't uh, say in a minute. So, President Donald Trump's open disparagement of the press, both as a candidate and since taking office, also contributed to the diminished score, according to the report, quote, No U.S. president in recent memory has shown greater contempt for the press than Trump in his first months in office, the report noted. Uh, I would just pause here for a moment to point out that the president has contempt for the press is not usurping the liberties of the press. The, the president gets up and says really foolish things in front of everybody, and then the press, you know, having recorded it, plays it over and over and over and over to show how stupid the president is acting. Um, that seems to me to be a case of freedom of the press working exactly as intended. This guy, even he's the president, he still has freedom of speech, he, is, he has expressed his opinion. He is a public figure. The news, has, the news media has taken note, and they are reporting on this story to the extent that it is a story. Um, so, freedom of, of press accomplished. Good, good work. Anyway, Trump's attacks mirror uh, initial actions in other countries where media freedom subsequ subsequently suffered far more drastic restrictions and interference by far more drastic restrictions and interference. What they mean is, presume, well, what they'd have to mean is actually some restrictions and inter interference. Notice that they've, there's some equivocation here. Uh, any, anyway, um, they, they say that, uh, that his contempt is, uh, his contempt of the, for the press is restricting the freedom of the press. And then they say, uh, because that is in and of itself you know, restricting the freedom of the press, even though nothing has actually happened that really stops the press from doing anything, as they note later on. Um, there are other countries in the world where, in addition to rhetoric, they actually did do things. And anyway, so they're just playing with words here. Still, the U.S. is categorized as having a free press in the latest findings, and its constitutional protect protections were applauded. That's precisely why, when the president gets up and says, incredibly stupid things about the media, that it does not in any sense whatever restrict the freedom of the press, because they are absolutely protected all day, all night, every day. And nothing the president wants to say or do changes that fact. It's not within his power. The most that he can do is say rude things about them, which is precisely what he does, and that's precisely how freedom of speech works. Anyway, the United States remains one of the most 
press-friendly countries in the world, the report said. It enjoys lively, aggressive, and diverse media, and some of the strongest legal protections for reporting and expression anywhere in the world. Nowhere in the world has stronger protections for their media than in the United States. There are a couple of other countries that have modeled their system on ours who do as well as we do. The fact they do as well as we do doesn't mean they're doing better than we are. They're doing this about the same as we are. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, so, other th here they are whining. Um, several recent presidents have sought to limit their exposure to reporters. Okay, true enough. Not a restriction on the freedom of the press. The press is as free today as they were 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years you know, on back, to attempt to interview anyone they should like to attempt to interview. The people they want to speak to are as free today as they were 10 years ago, 20 years ago, so on back, to decline the cordial invitation uh, to do an interview. The president's not taking time out of his life to have the interviews with various media outlets is not a restriction on the freedom of the press. It makes it uh, inconvenient for the press because he's being rude by not wanting to talk to them, but they're still as free uh, to do everything that they want that they were as free, they were free to do uh, before. Uh, aggressively attempted to bypass mainstream news outlets. What? 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 Here we get to when, here we get to the crux of their problem. Um, or made it difficult to access government records under the Freedom of Information Act. The Obama administration pursued a crackdown on federal officials who leaked information, while many journalists chafed at what they regard as excessive efforts to control access to the Obama White House. Here again, it's another complaint that uh, we're not free because you're not giving us all the, all the face time that we believe you should be giving us because you're doing other things, therefore, uh, well, because, the, speaking from the, this watchdog group's perspective, therefore, uh, you are oppressing the press. You are restricting the freedom of the press. But anyway, notice here when they said aggressively attempted to bypass mainstream news outlets. Yes, by using social media, by using uh, alternative news organizations rather than the corporate ones, which this is what these people's real complaint is. Um, in 2016, Freedom House saw a slight decline in press freedom in the United States due mainly to harassment and roughing up of journalists to Trump rallies. Uh, and a campaign of anti-Semitic abuse against Jewish journalists on Twitter. Uh, that doesn't, that's not freedom of the press. Being a, anyway. Uh, it is too soon to know whether the president will follow through on some of his most extreme campaign proposals, such as the threat to pursue more restrictive libel laws. Uh, let's just address that right on, uh, head on. Here is what uh, Donald Trump actually said about the libel laws. I'm going to open up our libel laws. So when they write purposely negative and horrible and false articles, we can sue them and win lots of money. We're going to open up those libel laws. So when the New York Times writes a hit piece, which is a total disgrace, or when the Washington Post, which is there for other reasons, writes a hit piece, we can sue them and win money instead of having no chance of winning because they're totally protected. All uh, Now, I realize to small-minded idiots that sounds like the president that Donald Trump has threatened to do something. But this is the distinction between doing news and doing propaganda, between doing fake news and doing actual news. You have to look at what he actually said and what is actually true. The president, uh, uh, Donald Trump, I think was a candidate at the time, has done nothing more than say he is going, in, in the future, he is going to do exactly what the law presently is. He, that's what he's agitating for. He has done nothing more than state the actual state of the law. Um, you know, go back to like New York Times against Sullivan. It, it that is all he has said when he says you know uh, purpose purposely negative and horrible and false articles. That's the standard of, uh, for public figures. If you want to pursue defamation of character against uh, some um, media outlet, and you're a public figure, you have to show that it has malice. You must show it. It's intentional. Um, it's uh, ba it's bad, obviously horrible and false. You know, to be libel, it has to be false. You, you, truth is an absolute defense to a, a libel claim or a slander claim. Uh, it, it has to be horrible, because if it's a good thing about you, you haven't been defamed. And uh, it has to be done on purpose. You know, they have to know and intend to represent something that is false as true in order to hurt. Anyway, that is what the law actually is. So anyway, um, So 
So it's soon to know whether uh, it's too soon to know whether he'll follow through on some of his proposals. Should he continue his attacks on the press, it could further erode public confidence in the media and set the stage for court or legislative measures that would set back freedom. No, they are conflating public confidence in the media with freedom of the media and saying that because if the public isn't confident that what the media is saying is true, that opens the door to legislation. That's a complete nonsense. Um, they are free to say whatever they want, no matter how idiotic it is. The American people are free to note it, notice, as they are doing uh, ever more, how completely idiotic what it is that has uh, been said in the news actually is, and, and to adjust their, uh, their scale factor, how they treat that organization appropriately. But, you know, here they say, rhetoric, however, is different from governance. So far, despite President Trump's fierce denunciations of unfavorable but factual stories as fake news, um, something can be a factual story, but nevertheless be, uh, you, you can nevertheless misrepresent reality by, saying, by only ever saying true things. It's entirely possible to lie by only ever saying true things. So saying that this story is factually true does not is not a response to the proposition that it's fake news. It's not a response to the proposition that it's uh, yellow journalism. You can distort reality by only ever saying true things. Anyway, there is abundant evidence that major news organizations remain undeterred, even innovative, in pursuing serious investigations of the government and Trump himself. Well, there you have it. All of his bloviating idiotically has amounted to absolutely nothing. And as I say, there is abundant evidence that it has done absolutely nothing. But nevertheless, I guess it's aspirational. So uh, one of their little bugaboos is talking about the economic status of, thing, of the media and how um, that threatens the freedom of the press. So if, if, the, if the press is not making enough money, they're no longer free. It's not true. They are free to succeed or fail on their merits. But uh, anyway, another part of uh, what they had to say that betrays their... In, anyway, the great danger is that the United States will stop being a model and as an aspirational standard for other countries. So they're giving a bit of a, uh, an extra penalty because they view the United States as precisely what it truly is, which is the greatest bastion of protection of freedom of the press, speech, and religion, whatever, uh, in the world. No one, when you put those, the, you know, the First Amendment that we have, no one protects those issues as, uh, as much as the United States does. No other country rivals us on that. Some countries will rival us on one or the other, you know, maybe two, but no country rivals us on all three. Anyway, protection of press freedom in the United States remains vital to the defense and expansion of freedom uh, worldwide. Indeed, it is a cornerstone of global democracy. When political leaders in the United States lambaste the media, it encourages their counterparts abroad to do the same. Uh, so, when you have a tension between the free speech of some person and the freedom of the press, on you know, on the other hand, um, the person should not speak. No, you have two competing rights, which each side is perfectly free to pursue to the full. That is free, open, unrestrained uh, dialogue. Some people will be wrong. Some people will lie whatever. Uh, the fact remains, no one is being stopped from speaking their piece. Um, when U.S. leaders step back from promoting democracy and freedom and press freedom, journalists beyond America's shores feel the chill. We have not stepped back from promoting democracy, uh, democracy or press freedom. Th they're just using this goofy definition of freedom. So they, uh, as is common when you talk about freedom, they like to point to Scandinavian countries and say that, you know, how much worse we are than the Scandinavian countries. So it'll be like, uh, you know, they talk about Norway. Well, I don't know how you possibly can say Norway uh, has a leg up on the United States because, after all, Norway um, gives um, stipends or whatever to the news organizations. They pay the news organizations. It's called um, press support. They give them money. The United States does not give them money, but because they have said economics is part of freedom of the press, because we don't get involved in the, our government doesn't get involved in the press at all by giving them money, uh, subsidies or whatever it is, anything, so you're on your own, succeed or fail, that is a threat to freedom of the press. No, it's not. It's, it may be a threat to particular press organizations who have a bad business model and are so dishonest they can't gain traction. 
sure, that's just the marketplace of ideas. People are free to look at what it is you had to say and find you wanting and go, well, you know, I'm going to move on. But in Norway, they say, well, actually, no matter how much you suck, uh, we're going to prop you up because reasons. Curiously, uh, the report also notes that um, the news, the, the press in, in, in that region is overwhelmingly aligned with the government in, in terms of their political views. I wonder if it has something whatever to do with the subsidies that come from the government to the news organizations and the news organizations realizing that, you know, there's money to be had there from the government. That's not particularly independent when part of your income depends upon the government's uh, largesse with tax dollars. Uh, you look at like some of the other countries uh, over there, uh, Denmark, I think, recently prosecuted uh, a bevy of journalists, I think three or four journal three journalists, uh, for harming national security, for publishing information in respect of uh, Saddam Hussein's uh, weapons of mass destruction. They were acquitted after the trial. You know, they go through the full trial, the full prosecution, and at the end, they were found not guilty. We don't do that here. We don't arrest journalists for reporting. Indeed, we protect them. You know, uh, New York Times against the United States with the so-called Pentagon Papers, where the president tried, you know, we want to stop this. It's bad for us. You're dis disseminating uh, false information. I'm sorry, classified information. So they intervened to stop the, uh, the media from publishing it and prosecuted, attempted to prosecute the guy who had done, who had, uh, done the reporting. Well, the guy who, you know, so they arrest him for espionage and other things, and he goes to court and the judge just throws the case out. Uh, the attempt to interfere and stop publication of this uh, was from the beginning of the litigation to the end of the litigation was two weeks. So it went from the development of the incident to the resolution in the Supreme Court of the United States saying, government, stay the fuck out of it. You have no business here. The, the newspapers are free to publish classified information all they want. Now, we do public trials here, too, and the media has an independent right um, from the First Amendment grounds to be in those trials, even if it's the case of one of the narrow exceptions where you can close the courtroom. Uh, the media still has its own interest that it can represent in court and be heard on. And if you look at, like, uh, some spies, the uh, uh, Ethel and uh, the Rosenbergs, um, when state secrets on our nuclear technology and the hardware were, you know, being spelled out in court. The judge told the media, I obviously can't, you know, ask you people to leave. You're going to stay, and I'm just going to leave it to your good judgment to decide uh, to do the right thing and not disclose these technical specifications of our nuclear arsenal to our enemies. No paper published it. The media was there. That, that is the media being responsible. They observed the proceedings. And then they decided not to engage in journalism, which they could have done, that would disclose how our nuclear technology, in fact, worked. Um, these countries in Norway and the Europe, you know, other countries I like to point to, they can, they can suppress speech for national security reasons. You can't do that here. Even if it harms national security, the media gets to publish what it is they want. And by the way, just, this is just built into the American uh, psyche. If you go back to our Civil War, when the Confederate states had, had seceded. Um, there's a book you should read if you haven't. It's called A Diary from Dixie from Mary uh, Chestnut, who was the wife of a brigadier general in the Confederate Army, who was, an aide, who was also an aide-de-camp to Jefferson, Days, Day, uh, Jefferson Davis, the president of the uh, Confederacy. And she's like, you know, we don't use censors here. Uh, our reporters are free to report however they want. And then she's noting that there was this case where a reporter went out to the battlefield and was complaining, was not complaining, was noting that the Union shot was missing the troops by whatever the amount was. So that was published, uh, that, the, that they were overshooting the Confederate troops. And then she further noted, the reporter did not seem to have appeared the next day to uh, appreciate the improvement on the accuracy of the artillery barrages. That reporter got many of his countrymen killed. And the government did absolutely nothing to try to stop it, notwithstanding the fact that uh, a reporter reporting on the location of your own forces to your enemy, who can read your papers, will in fact get some of your citizens killed, will in fact get your, some of your soldiers killed. Nevertheless, in America, we still say, 
they just have if that's the if their death is the price to be paid for a free press, for free speech, for all these other liberties we care so much about, then just so be it. We will have to accept those deaths. We are not censoring uh, the media. It is a big thing here. So this watchdog group has, well, I'm not going to rehash all of it, but you know, the persuasive uh, fallacy definition, persuasive definition fallacy, the uh, bevy of claims, which then they go on at the end to say, but by the way, there's abundant evidence that none of the the scary stories we just talked about, that were, which are the reason we're downgrading the freedom of the press in the United States, have actually come into existence. There is no actual pressure. There is no actual threat. There is no. Uh, oh, one thing they did. One thing they did mention is that uh, the big traditional established organizations are losing revenue streams because of the rise of so many alternate media sources. So this is another way of, of defining the <laughs> the very extravagant uh, like uh, buffet of media organizations as a as a restraint on the freedom of the press is you know the same way that by not even censoring our enemies who are here trying to propagand prop uh, propagandize our citizens against our government but by not intervening there that actually restrains the freedom of speech because too many people are talking on freedom of the press because too many news organizations are out there so apparently <clears throat> to protect the freedom of the press what you need to do is start getting away uh, start doing away with large parts of the press because if if there's too much press out there well by golly that's just that's just usurping liberty it's complete nonsense these people are uh, morons now, I will end uh, by pointing out something about Trump and the libel laws. The real story there is not that the president is threatening to do what's already being done. The real story there is that you have a president who's so uninformed on the state of our law that he can't speak intelligently about the state of our law in respect of these major issues. These things uh, that are civics lessons that all citizens should work hard to know about. One of the things I like most about Justice O'Connor is that since her retirement, she has been tirelessly going around this country and advocating and giving lectures and speeches and holding town halls and debates and whatnot on the importance of reestablishing a civics edu education in the United States, a good civics education in the United States. And a Donald Trump is, ex is like exhibit A as to why that needs to happen. A man who doesn't know our own laws on the biggest issues is up there saying these things, and he's saying that what I want to do is to make the, the state to change the state of the law from what he imagines it to be to this other thing, where it's already that other thing. You know, he wants to argue that he's going to do something that's already being done, but he doesn't know. That is already that that is already true. That 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 is already being done, and therefore he can do nothing more than sound like an idiot. That's the story that wouldn't have been fake news if the media went after it. But instead of actually analyzing that critically, thinking about what it means, what's actually true about the state of our law, they go around and say he's threatening to censor. So the president, in being wrong and uninformed about the law, and then saying that uh, he wants to change the law to do what it's already doing, he has inadvertently, by his stupidity, gotten the media to, to show exactly how good they are at fake news. They should have honed in on his ignorance, but they couldn't do it because they're so, they are so biased. So instead of honing in on that and pointing out this man is ignorant, they join in the delusion and attack the proposition. So that, that is fake news. It is misleading information. It is uh, sensationalized. They want people to be afraid of this man who said nothing more than I'm going to make the law tomorrow be what the law is today. All right. Have a great day, everybody.